Hi, this is Drew Brashler with Northridge Community Church. I'm here with Behringer X32 today, and I'm wanting to uh, teach you guys how to set up the board, um, to configure the board in a way so you can use uh, floor monitors or in your monitors, that sort of thing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press uh, the setup button over on the uh, right side of the screen. So let me just zoom out here just a little bit, sorry. There we go. All right, so we're going to uh, press the setup button and we're going to go over to config. And I just initialized my board, so pretty much everything is, uh, is the same um, as it would be from the factory, although I titled the mix buses um, one through six so that later I can show you guys that. So over here on the right side, we have our bus pre-configuration. Uh, I am going to zoom in on this because this is where the good stuff happens. So we can see that there is a pre, and this says post EQ. So this would be pre-fader send. So this would be uh, your pre-fader aux send on an analog board. Uh, your subgroup uh, is a summation of channels. So it's a summing point for your channels. So you can think of this as like a left-right fader. It's a destination for the audio to get summed together. And the reason that you would use the subgroup is if you had, say, um, a drum set where you had, you know, eight drum mics uh, and you had your mix and you were wanting to have that all come into one location so that you could either slap a compressor or slap a global EQ over the entire thing. You would have it come into a subgroup um, so that you can ad adjust everything globally. Um, and then you have your post fade. Uh, this is your post fade EQ um, or your um, your effects racks. So you would be feeding um, your delay your, on your vocal or maybe your chorus or um, your reverb, different things like that that you would want for your post fader EQ. You could also use this for um, feeding uh, recording devices, say a CD player or a video send or stuff like that. Basically with the post fader is anything that you have on your mix for your house mix um, is going to adjust anything in the post-fade um, mix. So, whereas pre-fade is if you had your house mix and you had your monitor mix, if you were to adjust all your faders, it wouldn't change anything in the monitors. But if you had it set up as a post-fade, if you adjusted stuff in your house mix, it would also adjust stuff in your monitors. Um, so post-fade, we really only use for a destination such as a recording or also the effects uh, racks built into the board. Um, so we have our different uh, selections that we can make here. Um, and here at Northridge, uh, we have um, six monitors, uh, six subgroups, and then we have our four um, post-fade uh, sends that we use for the effects rack. Uh, built into the board. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to set this up for uh, six floor wedges. Um, you can also do the same configuration only if you guys have two, um, but it's a good place to start. So we're going to go down to the knob that is right beneath here. Here we go. And we are going to rotate this down to where it says six plus six plus four. And what that means is that your one through six is a uh, pre-fade, um, seven through uh, 12 is a subgroup, and then uh, 13 through 16 is a post-fade. Um, and so then you will go ahead and press set. And then you will press yes to confirm. Now your board is set up, and you can see this on the right-hand side that one through six are post EQ, but pre-fade. Uh, seven through uh, 12 is subgroups, and 13 through 16 is post-fade. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and set up the output of the board to feed our different monitors. So we are going to go ahead and go into our routing page, and we're gonna first assign our outputs on the board um, for our mains. So the left and the right factory from Behringer go out on 15 and 16. I like this. Keep them there. It makes your planning for your monitors a whole lot easier because if you think as monitors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, the outputs on the analog on the back of the board can also be 1 through 6. If you had your mains coming off of 1, 
and two, and then your monitors would then start at three, but then in the board it's configured as monitor one. So it just makes things a lot uh, more complicated than you need it to be. So you want to make sure that your mains are coming off of 15 and 16, and then we're going to go ahead and scroll up to output one, and we are going to assign this to mix bus one. So uh, we are going to assign mix bus one, assign, and this is going to be post fader. And the reason it's going to be post fader is because this is a send, this is an output. It's not where we're pulling something from. So what this allows us to do is the master fader for that mix or that bus is now the volume knob for that one specific speaker. So I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. So uh, output two, we're going to go ahead and put that to mix bus two and make sure that's post fader. Output three, uh, is going to be mix bus three, assign, set, mix bus, output four is mix bus four, make sure that's that, make sure it's post fade, five is five, and six is six. So now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here and look down here. All right, so when we select bus one through eight using this knob, this button, uh, we have our master section. So this is the um, final volume of this mix bus before it gets sent out. So you want to have all these up at Unity. So at zero. Now say uh, monitor six was your drum wedge for your drummer and say he wanted it to be turned up the overall mix to be turned up, but you didn't want to have to go through everything on the left side of your board to turn everything up. All you'd have to do is raise this up. Or say your vocal wedge was feeding back because it was way too loud. You would take your vocal wedge and we're gonna have that be one and we're gonna just turn that down. So by having those outputs configured as a post fader for the output, we can use this as a volume knob for that overall thing. So now um, we're going to go ahead and just uh, show you guys just a quick version of the sends on fader. Uh, you can check out my other video that has this a little bit more into detail. Um, but say we have a mock mix um, of my, uh, you know, this is my front of house mix. And so to mix something into monitor one, uh, we would go to bus one through eight, select that. And then we can go and select monitor one. We can also solo it to listen to it. And then we can press this button called Sends on Fader. Now, what Sends on Fader is cool for is we have monitor one selected. And now the left side of the board turns in to a whole console just for this monitor. So you can visually see what's being sent in to this specific monitor. And because it's soloed, you're listening to it. So not only do you visually get to see what's happening in your mix, but you also get to hear it through your either headphones that are plugged into the console or your uh, near fields if you have some plugged in. Um, so now we can have you know our mock mix on this. Say he wants to hear all the drums and the vocal mics, but then he wants to have the bass really, really loud. Okay, so that's his mix. And now when we go ahead and press sense on fader back, we are now back to our original house mix. Okay, so the drummer, he has nothing going into his monitor, so he wants us to build him a little bit of a mix. So we're going to go ahead and press select, and we can press solo. And um, one thing that you can configure the board to do is the solo can follow the select button, or the select can follow the solo button. And what that means is if you press solo on one channel, the select will also follow that solo. You can set it up like that. Um, I have my board configured that way. It is in your monitor section uh, in the board. Um, so read the manual and you can figure that one out. So we are on monitor six. Don't forget to press suns on fader. Now we are looking and listening to our drummer's mix. So now we're going to go ahead and give him some of our vocals, a whole bunch of the drums, because he really likes that. Way too much bass again. And then, you know, the flute and the cello. He, he really likes those. So now that's, that's the drum mix. And so now if we go ahead and press select um, on monitor one, we can see that his mix will change. So you can see that the drummer has a little bit different mix than the vocalist. 
So we'll, we'll go ahead and give the drummer just a little bit more of a different mix than the vocalist here. So we're going to go ahead and select monitor one again. So now we are visually seeing on this board what's going into monitor one. But then when we go select monitor two with the sends on, or monitor six with the sends on fader, we're now visually seeing what's going into monitor six. So this is how you can set up your board um, to feed uh, six monitors. You can also set it up to feed um, you know, 16 monitors if you wanted it to. Um, and so the, the nice thing about this board is it's so flexible. There, there is just so much different things that you can do with this. Um, so that is a really quick tutorial on how to set up the board uh, for your monitors. Um, and then when you're doing your house mix, you don't have to worry about adjusting things in the monitors when you're mixing for your house. So if you have any questions, feel free to post below. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you for listening.